So hello and welcome back. Now is our third and final installment for lecture 1-2 on kinematics. Today is all about inverse kinematics. So far we have looked at how to define forward and inverse kinematics, how to look at wheeled locomotion and how we use that in robot navigating in the world, and also how we model forward kinematics by using an instantaneous center of curvature or instantaneous center of rotation. And finally, we're going to look at using inverse kinematics to define a robot's wheel velocities in order to move the robot to a given motion or pose in the world. I hope you enjoy. So a kinematic controller has a goal to enable the robot to follow a given trajectory to get it to a position or velocity profile as a function of time. Remember, a trajectory is like a path but it has an, ad an additional dimension of time. So a motion control or kinematic controller is not as straightforward as it would be, let's say for an industrial robot or something that is tethered to a fixed position because the robot is not holonomic, which means it cannot move from side to side. The Y axis velocity is zero. And if we're talking about a differential drive robot, you have to create this motion profile only based upon setting the left and right wheel velocities. And so because of that, to get to a certain position, remember we talked about you may have to use odometry or integration, which can also accumulate error over time to estimate the robot's position. So a kinematic controller is one way of doing this. And in that method, we've already seen the ICR. So to get the robot from a start position to a goal position, you may have to look at defining different motion segments based upon curves and straight lines with some type of open loop control in order to get from point A to point B. Remember, you're gonna have open loop control if you don't have any kind of way of measuring robots motion or distance, such as using an encoder. And that's going to, of course, have a control problem because it's basically an eyes closed type of control where the robot's just moving forward. You have no idea if it's actually getting there or not. And remember, it's moving around a world that is not static, that may be changing. Things may walk in front of the robot or people may walk in front of the robot or things may appear and disappear, etc. So the control problem is how do you pre-compute a trajectory based upon line and circle segments to get the, role, the robot from a start position to a goal position. So assume that the goal of the robot is the origin of your global inertial frame. So you need the kinematics of your differential drive robot with respect to the global ref reference frame. And the way we do this is the position of the robot with respect to the global reference frame can be found by using this equation where the input is the robot's linear and angular velocity. So it's cosine theta zero sine theta zero, zero one times V omega. And what you see here is we have our start position, we have our goal position, and just by giving the robot its linear and angular velocity, you wanna get that error between current position and where you want it to be to zero. So given this arbitrary position, you gotta have feedback control. So this is where you have a transducer such as an encoder or some way of measuring. Like if you have stepper motors or something, how many wheel ticks have you gone? So now you estimate where I want to be, where I currently am. The difference between those is your error. You send that into a proportional controller, K, or some kind of controller, and you keep using that until you converge on that goal point where the output is just linear and angular velocity until the robot eventually gets there. So looking at this value in the kinematics for doing this, another way to think about it is in terms of the velocity in the X, Y, and theta direction. And so what we see here is you now have this formula, X dot Y dot theta dot times cosine theta zero, sine theta zero, zero one times V omega, or rho, which is now that forward distance between the robot and the goal is the square root of delta x squared plus delta, delta y squared. Think about that like the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And alpha, which is that, is that yaw, think about alpha as the yaw. And so that would be negative theta plus the arc tangent of delta y delta x. And then beta, is now the angle with respect to the real axis, or that would be negative theta minus alpha. So now you're looking at how is that angle changing? How is that distance changing as the robot moves in towards that goal? 
That was the Cartesian explanation. What about in polar form? So you could also look at this in terms of rho theta, alpha theta, and beta theta, how these angles are changing as the robot's moving in towards the goal. And so now your formula would become cosine alpha zero, negative sine alpha over rho one, sine alpha over rho zero times V omega, or they flip signs if the robot's back is to the goal and you have to turn the robot around to get there. So it's now negative cosine alpha zero, sine alpha over rho negative one, and negative sine alpha over rho zero. And notice the main difference is it's ne the negation of the first matrix. So one of them is if that starting angle is between negative pi over two and pi over two, or the other one is if that starting angle is pi over two to pi or negative pi to negative pi over two. So then based upon that, you come up with some kind of control law. Like I, like I said earlier, this could be a proportional controller, or in this case, now that we're defining everything in terms of rho naught, alpha naught, and beta naught, you would have a proportional controller for each of those. So you would have negative K rho, rho cosine alpha for rho naught. For alpha naught, you would have K rho sine alpha minus K alpha alpha minus K beta beta. And for beta naught, you would have negative K rho sine alpha. So the control law is now to interpret those into velocity. So your linear velocity for your robot would be K rho rho and the angular velocity for the robot would be k alpha alpha plus k beta beta. So this is what the closed loop system then would look like. And so here are two examples of the robot moving from several locations in the world into the global inertial frame of zero zero, where the robot either starts from a position with its front towards the goal or its back towards the goal and then just looking at that starting position in our different control laws, here are examples of trajectories of how the robot would then move to that position. So remember, inverse kinematics is determining what real velocities we need to give the robot in order to get it to a new pose. So we looked at the more complicated way of doing this with the controller, but there is an easier way. Because this is such a difficult problem and there are so many unknowns, there are many equations with many solutions, there is a way to simplify this. And that is to spin the robot to a desired angle first and then move it forward to the desired location. So as opposed to tweaking the angular velocity and the linear velocity as the robot moves, I take one of those out by either spinning and moving forward or moving forward and then spinning. So you would approximate these arcs along your ICR, but you would break it down into these simpler straight line paths and arc portions. So then the robot has a drive time and velocity based upon either spinning or moving forward as opposed to trying to do them at the same time. So you'd set velocities and compute a drive time or set a drive time and compute velocities. So let's see what this looks like. So if I do the spin time and velocity approach, so first I figure out how long I need to spin the robot to get to a certain angle. And then I set the wheel velocities based upon that. And then I use that to solve for the amount of time it needs to spin. So I need to have the width of the robot. I need to have the velocities for the left and right wheels because I know that the formula is theta of t plus delta equals theta of t plus omega delta, I can solve for delta, which is just going to be the difference between the angles over omega. And since I know that omega is v1 minus v2 over 2L, and that v1 equals negative v2 because the robot is spinning, I can solve for the angular velocity, which is v1 over L. And then finally, I can find delta as L times theta of t plus delta minus theta of t over v1. Alternately, I can set the spin time and calculate the wheel velocity, similar formula, but I now solve for v1, which is equal to L times theta of t plus delta minus theta of t over delta. So now, what about if I wanted to solve for the inverse kinematics in terms of forward time? The forward time is determined 
the forward time is determined by the velocity of the wheels, knowing that the left and right velocity have the same value of the robots driving forward. So x of t plus delta is just xt plus vt delta cosine of theta t, or y of t plus delta is yt plus vt delta sine of theta t. So x of t plus delta is not equal to x of t. If x of t plus delta is not equal to x of t, then delta is just the difference between the x positions divided by the velocity cosine theta. Or if x of t plus delta is equal to x of t, then I know that the robot is moving up the y-axis, so delta would be the difference in the y values divided by vt sine of theta t. Conversely, you could also set the forward, conversely, you could also set the forward time and use that to set your wheel velocities. So you know if it's moving forward, the velocities have to be the same, but if you know how long you want the robot to move, use that to dictate how fast the robot goes. So once again, you would have if x of t plus delta is not equal to x of t, then the velocity is the difference between the y positions divided by delta cosine theta t, or if x of t plus delta is equal to x of t, you know it's moving up the y-axis, so, the velocity would be y of t plus delta minus yt over delta sine of theta t. And with that, we are done. This has been a very intense lecture. Kinematics is not for the weak at heart. Let me just say that. So I would strongly suggest that you run through this lecture a couple of times, take notes, make note, solve for some of these equations yourself, do some of the examples, make sure you can get those answers. And we are now moving on. So I hope I still have you with me and that you're still following along. And finally, make it a robotastic day.